Welcome, everyone, to this uh, Music Mindfulness Sunday service. I'm Kalani, and uh, today's theme is, is peace. So uh, I started off with something um, that I thought would be a little winter-like, uh, the, the cooler season, the winter season for, for most of us, at least on the northern, in the northern hemisphere, is one of um, slowing down, contemplation, uh, reflection, and stillness in many ways. And stillness, uh, as you know, Eckhart Tolle talks about and others, can be a, a passageway into peace, peacefulness. So we're going to talk about how we can embody peace, how can we, how can we create more Peace, if that's something that is desirable for you. Um, peaceful feeling. Because we have to remember that peace is not just a, a state in the world. It's a feeling, you know, that you experience. So we want to focus on that today. Uh, the feeling of peace. Because just stillness is stillness. Is stillness. stillness is like silence in music in many ways, uh, or the absence of change or absence of dynamics. Um, but just stillness by itself um, is not necessarily peace. So let's make that distinction and, and think about how we can cultivate peace. Uh, sometimes people have said it's not just the absence of struggle or the absence of war, but it's the active participation in, uh, per, in the pursuit of peace and the, uh, and the commitment to feeling peaceful. So how do we embody that in our daily lives? One way is to uh, de-escalate potential conflicts. One way we can have peace is to catch ourselves before we get into conflict and find, um, find alternate pathways of being and relating. You know, we knew that we know that music is all about relationships. And so what can music teach us about mindfulness? One of the things that music can teach us um, as an experiencer and observer of music is that uh, this is that silence and stillness need to be actively pursued and actively uh, placed into a musical experience. Uh, a lot of amateur music musicians tend to, and I'm generalizing right now, but they tend to overplay because what they value more or perhaps more than, than anything is the production of music, is the production of sound. Uh, a lot of new players strive to play more and faster and louder and more complex, and that tends to be, not in every case, but it tends to be uh, the, the trajectory that, that the student is on, the musician, until they become more seasoned and more experienced and value, come to value the space and the silence and the in-between moments uh, just as much, if not more, than the production of sound, than the notes. And we know that silence is really the, the background, is the canvas. It allows music to manifest. Uh, but it's more than that. Silence and music 
uh, silence in music helps us create a very powerful uh, anticipation. It allows us to absorb and reflect um, on what happened before. So after we experience music, often we want to have silence. We want to have a, a few moments, at least, to sit with it and to absorb it and to feel it and to enjoy the feeling. And in many ways, that's what winter is. That's what this season is. It's not just a season of celebration and outwardness. And it certainly is partially that of giving, of community, of sending good wishes, of helping others. Uh, it is. It certainly does include those things, but it can also include a bit of reflection after the year, after the planting, after the spring, after the growing, after the harvesting, after all the work. Uh, much of the work has been done throughout the year, and I'm speaking more in a farming <laughs> metaphor or analogy right now. One of the ways you reap the benefits of all that is by quiet appreciation, reflection, uh, and um, just being with, enjoying, you know, enjoying your life, what, what you have, uh, without trying to do things, without trying, without pushing and so um, let's learn from some of our more experienced musicians, uh, examples out, out there from past and, and present, who use silence and stillness in a very powerful way. And perhaps you can start to think about that for yourself. How can I use the idea of stillness, sitting, you know, non-action, non-striving, uh, as a way to transcend some of uh, the impulses uh, where you could look back and think well, that was a transgression. We want to transcend the transgressions by um, not feeling, uh, not always doing, not always adding or putting in or trying to make things happen. To me, one of the most valuable things you can do uh, is to, and, and I don't mean this in, in an entire, this isn't your entire approach, but how do you feel, how do you experience the feeling of peace? How do you enjoy it? I, I assert that one of the ways that you can uh, really enjoy the feeling of peacefulness is to stop trying to do things. Stop trying to make things happen um, for, for a time, you know, not indefinitely, of course. There's nothing wrong with striving. There's nothing wrong with achievement. But um, when we only are striving, when we're only trying to achieve, when we're only trying to affect our environment and, and assert our will on the environment or on others, we often uh, don't experience the simple pleasure of being. And so um, you don't have to do anything to experience beingness. And again, my perspective is that beingness is peacefulness. The world, the universe, whatever you want to, whatever word you want to use to describe this happening is generally, generally uh, very calm and peaceful uh, and usually there's very little to be concerned with in terms of survival or, you know, issues. Uh, there are times when you do need to be concerned with survival and, and you know, over solving problems and things. But in general, most of the time, uh, most of us throughout the world can experience a deep sense of peacefulness if we simply just stop trying to make things happen and sit and enjoy the feeling, just enjoy being. And I also want to add that in that, and uh, I, I realize that many people uh, prefer and practice meditation techniques. There's nothing wrong with meditating. 
But meditating um, is, again, is doing something, is trying to meditate, <laughs> is trying to create some specific situation. So perhaps, I mean, and you can do that, and that's, that can be beneficial, but maybe in addition to doing a meditation, because when you're trying to do a meditation, sometimes you can feel like I'm not doing it right, or you're concerned about how, am I do, how well am I doing this? Am I really doing it? Am I getting it? You know, and then you're, you're, you're still striving. You're striving to meditate. <laughs> so again, you know, folks, this is really simple. Uh, what if you tried to not try, but instead just allow yourself to be in the world uh, however you are without, and don't judge it without judging. Just, just be and just observe, observe the feeling of beingness. That's all. And not even judging that. I mean, you might, you might enjoy it. You may, it might make you feel uncomfortable. You might feel uncomfortable with not doing anything. Without striving, you might think, oh, I've got to be doing something. I've got to be productive. Uh, and then observe that feeling. Why do you have that feeling? Is that true? I guess it might be true for you. Um, but that could be your practice. Uh, and then see, just see how that is. You don't have to do, you don't have to make your, your life happen. Your life's already happened. It's happening. So uh, all the feelings, all the, the beingness that you have is there automatically. You don't have to create it. Uh, really, all you can do is bury it with busyness. <laughs> That's one of the, one of the th ways we get away from a peaceful feeling is we just bury it with stuff, right? We bury it with thinking, we bury it with activity. Um, a lot of people like to be busy, you know, occupied, and they get um, a little bit nervous or they feel uneasy when they're not busy. And um, I don't know if that's, I mean, I, I can't really speak for anyone except myself, but um, I would suggest maybe just trying to be okay with being with, and maybe you might experience a, a, an amazing feeling, an amazing quality in the world without, without striving, without trying to do things. And uh, the, the nice thing about experiencing beingness, that's, that's my term for that, experiencing beingness, uh, which means you're not doing anything, <laughs> you're just being. Um, the, the nice thing about that is that it's always available to you. And it's, that is your gift. That's the gift of life. That's the gift of, you know, this time you have in the, what people call the manifested world. Um, so you don't have to make that happen. It's already happening automatically, just like everything around here is manifested, growing, changing, interacting. Um, what, what you're responsible for is your relationship to it. That's all. So you choose how you're going to relate to the things that are happening, but you're not going to change the things that are happening. You're not going to make them happen or not happen in terms of, you know, in the big picture. So I hope you can find time to enjoy just a simple beingness, you know, without feeling any pressure to, to make things happen. Um, it's kind of like music. I can allow this instrument to speak and enjoy it and just, uh, I don't have to do anything, really. I mean, just touch it and the beauty is there. And Dave Jackson just said something really true. We are human beings, not human doings. It's exactly right. You can do things. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, do stuff. Of course, we all do. But don't um, bury 
the beautiful sense of beingness while you're doing stuff. That's the point. Or, if, you know, if you get busy for a while, just take a little time. Take a little moment here and there, moments, and grab those moments and cherish them and think, oh my God, this is so amazing that I'm here and I can do these things and I have this community and I'm making music and I'm laughing and we're doing things. But step, step out of it for a moment here and there and just appreciate it. That's all. That's all we have to do. I'm going to create another winter soundscape now. Um, I'm going to start over from scratch here and, uh, and we'll see where we're going. I am using a few instruments I'll tell you about. One is this Kosmoski um, tank drum. Today we're in B minor. Uh, another couple instruments are these Native American style flutes. This one, actually both of these, these are a pair of flutes that were made um, for me by Dan Shell Chow at Journey of Life Flutes. And this wood is uh, wood that I sent to Dan and I got this wood in Thailand. And I brought back this hunk of wood and I sent it to Dan and I said, can you make me a flute or two? And he did, and he made me an F sharp and a B. And what I'm doing today, and this gets a little technical, but what I'm doing today is I'm playing the B minor flute with the B minor Kosmoski drum in the regular mode. And then I'm playing the F sharp, which is a little bit lower with this, but I'm playing it in a different fingering that matches the B minor fingering. It's called mode four. Um, if you're interested in native flute, you can visit me at patreon.com slash Kalani. I have a lot of flute lessons there. Uh, and then I'm also using this wind whistle. I, I bought this in Mexico City. It's a clay whistle. I'm using some sleigh bells. These are actual sleigh bells that go would go around, you know, somebody's neck <laughs> or maybe a waist. They're old, really old, beautiful sleigh bells, small ones. And I'm using a rain stick. and uh, maybe a couple other little things here. So uh, I'm gonna play again, and then we'll wrap up. We'll start off, maybe we'll start off with some rain. So I wanna thank you for joining me today for this Sunday service, um, a message about peace. And uh, just keep some of those things in mind. Take some time for yourself to just be. Clear away all the stuff, don't try, just be and enjoy it. And look for ways to, you know, look for ways to stay out of, stay out of a conflict if you can. Sometimes just leaving a situation is the, is the easiest, quickest path to peace. Okay, here we go.
thank you for spending another Sunday morning with me. I'm Kalani. This is Music Mindfulness, a community service of World Drum Club and Kalani Music. You can find more of my work at KalaniDas.com. The Evolve podcast also available through iTunes. And you can support this work as well as all the music work, music education that we do over at patreon.com slash Kalani. If you'd like to connect with me more, you can do that over there and also through KalaniMusic.com. I want to thank all the people who made the beautiful instruments that I'm using today. Thank you for tuning in. Please share this live looping, uh, live lecture, broadcast, music mindfulness. Share it with the people you care about and the people who you'd love to care about more and who need this. I'll see you next time. Thanks for being here.